a great pleasure to welcome back to What's Next, our first interview for 2023 with Kerbis Fosaki, who's the executive of Business Solutions at Tracker. Uh, firstly, Kerbis, uh, uh, welcome back to you and best wishes for 2023. Um, before we start our interview, I just, I'm out of interest, um, and I, I imagine it has a minimal impact, but, you know, load shedding is impacting every single business in the country, but you guys use predominantly satellite technology. Is uh, load shedding impacting your business at Tracker at all? Um, thanks, Aki. Yeah, nice, nice having me again. Um, load shedding is not directly impacting us. Um, what it does is obviously impacting our customers. Where yes. we do see some some issues is a lot of cell towers, especially in outlying areas, um, is not always having additional uh, battery power. Yes. And then they, we, we, we run into issues where the cell tower goes down, um, and then obviously we don't, we don't have that connectivity. Although what does happen, that unit keeps on reporting. So when you keep on driving and it gets to a place where it gets signal again, it will obviously start sending the data again. Ah, oh, okay. Um, yeah, brilliant. I was wondering so, about that, you know. Things. Yeah, no, that's that's clever technology. So it almost caches it, and then when it does find a signal, it kind of uploads the information. Now, the last time we we spoke, we spoke about quite a bit of uh, things that you've been busy with at Tracker, and and obviously uh, monitoring vehicles, monitoring incidents that happens on happen on the roads, and we know that the roads are quite treacherous in South Africa. And when we look at fleet vehicles, and I want to focus on fleet vehicles today, that if a fleet vehicle, for example, is involved in a road incident, how, how does the, the data from Tracker's Track and Dispatch IQ, the TDIQ that you, go, you guys call it, the IQ Assist uh, in investigations, and I, I imagine that it's quite useful data to know to find out what actually happened. Yeah, so, so normally what happens, if you do not have a dispatching system, uh, like plat planning dispatching system, you end up doing replays of the vehicle, and normally it happens after the fact. So we, we do that in any case, and send out an accident report. But however, uh, a lot of companies do not have driver tags, so you can't identify the driver, and when it gets to, to uh, the legislation, or you might end up in a court case, you have to obviously prove it, who's the driver, when it happened, what happened. And then the other part of the coin is that obviously you have uh, customer cargo uh, sometimes on it. And if that vehicle is an accident, sometimes the cargo gets damaged as well. So with the track of the dispatch IQ system, you have full control. You, have, you know where the driver is all the time. Um, you have all the information of the customer, the waybill, everything that's loaded on that vehicle. Um, and obviously the full replay. And we keep that up to two years with, within the cloud. So it's very easy to refer back to, to any of these incidents um, and then get all the additional data that's required, for instance, to prove, but listen, this is the driver. And yes. the driver do a vehicle inspection, so you can prove in, in front, but listen, the, the driver vehicle inspection was done, nothing was wrong with the vehicle, and that's also a lot of times been used in the court cases. How, how detailed is that information? Does it, for example, say that, uh, at this time, from this time to that time, the vehicle traveled from A to B. This was the speed that the, the vehicle was traveling at. And then from this time to that time, it went from this point to that point. Is, is it that detailed, the information? Yes. So, so that, that comes from the telematics device. So yes. obviously that the, the TDIQ system just keeps record of what transaction happened, what you're dispatching, ah. what you're planning, and where it was going. But the telematics data gives you that literally, we call it, it's 100 megahertz, 100 hertz, uh, that it actually records continuously. So, and we can simulate that accident 100%, because the accelerometer has eight axes, and you can immediately see, we pick up all, all the uh, G-forces, and we can actually determine from that uh, what speed this vehicle was at traveling, although we do, do have that via the GPS. Yes. And we, we, can, we create an accident port that, happens automatically once we, we get the accident notification um, and then that gets immediately sent and just makes it easier for the customer to obviously uh, take all this data information amalgamate it and present it then to the assessor who everything needs to uh, present to. That, that's absolutely fascinating you know I mean I was I was uh, thinking back to the days when I was in the helicopter and we had one of your tracker devices 
that we used to help the police and, you know, recover stolen vehicles. And in those days, the data was very raw data. You know, it was very basic data. Today, it's a, it's a different story. You know, we were talking earlier about the AI and the integrated artificial intelligence and the machine learning and the TDIQ that that you've got embedded in the technology today. And I'm, I'm sure that all of these things add a totally new ball game to, to, to tracking vehicles with, with the tracker technology. I mean, AI has certainly been a game changer. Yeah, definitely, Aki. I mean, if, if you think about um, where AI was coming from, and now today it's quite the buzzword with, with new initiatives like that chat GPT. So I think suddenly there's a hell of a lot of focus on it. And uh, everybody realizes that it's here to stay. So it's to your benefit to actually utilize it. Now, TDIQ has just got a small part of it where we actually uh, got built-in algorithm wider neural networks that sort of learns. So, so what it does, for instance, you drive a route and we give it a lot of parameters or variables to say, listen, um, this is a danger area. We have seen hijackings in this area, which is quite, um, happening quite a lot. So then it will recalculate the route by itself and go past it. Uh, potholes, uh, roads that's blocked, bad weather, for instance, um, quite a few things that can do. Load shedding obviously impacts heavily. I mean, uh, it's not just mm. load shedding because a driver won't know if he drives through a certain area um, if there's load shedding or not. Um, but we can determine that by the traffic patterns we pick up and um, divert the driver. Because nowadays, obviously, the on demand, um, what customers want nowadays, I mean, with 60 60 and everything. Um, it boils down further into your supply chain where, where even the large carriers, the 3PL guys, they, they are all to certain timelines because when you deliver, for instance, to a checker, the loading, the loading bay is available for you, it's booked for you, say, from 9 till 10. If you're late, um, then you wait in the back of the line until they have time to offload you. And the moment a vehicle stands, costing you money. So all of that plays quite a big role and the AI <laughs> keeps on learning and uh, over time uh, can even start predicting what, what will happen uh, given if, if we give it certain variables like, for instance, weather or traffic uh, yes. and then get, get the correct um, Also, a security factor, um, like, and, and for instance, a lot of times driver will be rooted to a route. If you do not uh, put in data restrictions, then you end up with a vehicle under a bridge that caught fire. And as you know, there was quite yes. a incident with that. So even that assist with that, uh, as long as you obviously mapped all of those geo zones of those breaches and say, listen, this vehicle, because of this height, are not allowed to drive past this. Same with schools. Um, you, you just reroute it. It doesn't go past schools because um, it's very easy for children to run in front of a truck. You do not stop a truck as easy as a motor vehicle. Um, mm. And well, again, you want to avoid those type of incidents. Yeah, it's amazing uh, how AI is just changing so many things. I mean, now you just talked about, you know, devices sharing information with each other, and then you, you start making sense of that information, and you're giving a heads up to, uh, you know, people that are using your technology on a specific route. Um, and, and, you know, that, that has got tremendous benefit for, for, for companies, for organizations, for individuals. You know, we did ch chat last time uh, very briefly about the, uh, the AI benefits. Uh, and 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 you also touched on the AI dash cam, um, which is which is quite interesting. It is, it's quite a, a relatively new innovation from from Tracker. Talk to us about the those benefits that AI brings and and the the AI dash cam that you guys have got. Um, if you think about um, the benefits of AI, um, it, it's all if you put it together in a solution. So you have multiple devices, you end up with a lot of data, a lot of information. Mm. Um, and it's quite difficult to comprehend that um, even after the fact. Doing it in real time, uh, on the edge, what we call it, um, is, is, is what we're trying to aim for and what, what we have done with the AI dash cam. Uh, so what that will do, even if it doesn't have connectivity to the back end, it will keep on um, call, um, recording events, for instance, um, <laughs> You took close in the vehicle up front of you, it will record the event. Uh, over speeding, it will record the event. You stop at the stop street and a pedestrian runs in front of you, you have to lift with the brakes, it will record it. It will assist the driver, um, it monitors your eyelids, and if it closes for too long a time period, it will actually warn you as well. 
um, distracted, you know, cell phones, uh, everybody goes and it will warn you as well. And obviously all of those events gets recorded and not only recorded, it actually scores it. So it does automatic scoring from one out of 10. And then basically it's very easy for you to go and look at all your drivers and you say, listen, any driver below eight, I want to retrain or I put them in a training course uh, because that's your risk factor. Um, you want to contain that, minimize your risk and ensure that your driver and obviously your customers load, um, get from point A to point B within a specific time. Now, all of this is, is a solution that you have to put together together with your tracking and all of this information. And in South Africa specifically, we, we need to ensure that this device works even if there's zero connectivity. So IO Dashcam will do exactly the same. It will keep on recording. It records it um, um, 24 by 7 uh, as long as you draw, drive, obviously. And then it will only send up the events and do the driver's calling for you the moment it gets connectivity again. What will happen, for instance, if you, after the fact, um, th there's a certain point in time where something ha happened, for instance, uh, what we do see, for instance, a, a dash cam cannot see a vehicle that drives into the back of you. Um, but <clears throat> what you can see with the event, it will, it will show a shock. So that can be used, uh, side impacts, uh, obviously come back. Then you can go and actually extend that video and get it back. Um, the other big factor with that is, is that our resolution is, is full 1024p uh, on, on that camera. Mm. And, and it's very important during investigations and even with, with, with vehicle accidents. We, we utilize it in all our own vehicles and it saved us quite a lot of money already with, with third party incidents and, and all of that. Um, but overall, I mean, it, it just enhances your, vehicle, your, your driver performance, it minimizes your risk. And in the end of the day, it's just cost savings that you will see from that. Does it record uh, front, forward facing and inward facing as well? Yeah, correct. It, it okay. has to, um, to obviously see your face. Although for yes. privacy, you can switch off the inside camera, uh -huh. but the AO will still work. So it will still monitor your eyes, everything, but it will, will not record you. you. Um, and there is incidents where, where, where certain companies obviously want to have that. Um, so that, but you still have the ADAS benefits, um, so that the driver obviously can get scored overall, um, but you, you protect his privacy. You know, I was just thinking, Quibus, I mean, this kind of technology, you, you're actually making drivers safer on the road. So if a company, let's say, for example, has a fleet of 100 trucks, and they were scoring uh, on average between five and six before, now that you've got the technology... Uh, they, the, the, the drivers are more aware, the, the drivers have gone on intensive training, etc., etc., and the driving skills have improved dramatically. And with the detection of finding out if you're tired or not, it, it really adds a lot of barriers to preventing accidents happening. I imagine that these kind of scenarios and these, this kind of scoring can actually influence an insurance, uh, an insurance premium. I mean, if you, if you are less risk to the insurance company, then surely it can impact your insurance premiums. Okay, you're absolutely correct. Um, it, it, it has been proven already uh, with certain of our customers by installing our cameras, you, you drive your risk down, you minimize your risk. Um, a lot of incidents happens because of fatigue, uh, drivers that's, that's overworked or driving too long. Um, and then obviously the one time it, it wakes you up and prevent the accident, you've saved millions. Yeah. Um, not only that, if, if you're self-insured, which a lot of the bigger companies also, what that means is you've got a gap that you pay for yourself before the insurance will kick in. Um, to get over that gap, obviously you want to minimize it and you do not want to um, actually utilize the other insurance. Yes. So it always happens. But by doing this, um, obviously the insurer would look at it and say, but listen, your risk factor was a 9 out of 10. But because you're utilizing this technology and we can physically see the improvement on a, on a day or month to month basis, if you want, want to trend it, um, therefore I can give you a 10% discount um, on, on the premiums. Oh, okay. And a lot of companies are busy doing that already. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. How is Track and Dispatch IQ different to AI, Quibus? Okay, so Track and Dispatch IQ is, is just software that renders the service and it utilizes AI in the, in the back end to obviously just facilitate, make things quicker, faster, easier. 
uh, one of the big things obviously is geolocations. I mean, everybody puts in their address and if you put in your GPS and you instinctively know where it is and because you know it's this area, whatever, and you pick the correct one. Um, if you have a business and you have 5,000 addresses, we have 100 daily, which is maybe new, it's, it's not so easy because you've never been there, you've never driven there. So mm. you need something to obviously geolocate that quite quickly within the same region. So what happens with older systems is that you end up with addresses sitting in Joburg and in Cape Town because it just picks the first one it finds. So what the AI will assist you and what, what PDIQ will do for you is say, but listen, everything is contained within a region. So it makes logical sense that this needs to be in this region as well. And it will actually go and hunt in this area and find an address which is the closest to it and it will actually flag it for you and say, listen, oh. I think it's this in the red. I, I don't have a confidence factor of 100%, but I think it's this. And then you as a user can just go, oh, yes, it's the right place. And you enter it. Because a lot of time, a customer will give you not a lot of information. He says, I'm Nindala Rabel, number 21. And you go like, but if everything is contained, the AI can learn from that. And once it's got that address associated with that customer, next time it knows about it and picks it up quite easy. So it's it's quite a work, a big job initially just to, to get all of your, your locations cleaned up. If you have fixed routes, very easy. But if you do the on-demand where you get like the 60-60, um, every day you have to deliver at multiple points, uh, then you need to juke those as far as possible and actually not be dependent on manpower. And basically yeah. the AI will do all that work for you. But I imagine like with, with things like accidents and that, um, I mean, I was talking to somebody recently, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, they, they, were in, they were driving down to KZN and there was a, a massive accident along the route and they were literally stuck on the highway for over 10 hours. I mean, it was, it was, it was that bad. I think the accident happened somewhere near Peter Maritzburg um, and, you know, these accidents happen frequently, but he was literally stuck on the highway for 12 hours and I imagine that with this technology you can start forewarning the fleet drivers to say listen uh, wait five hours or wait X amount and don't travel along this route or divert along this particular route so that's where it also comes handy I suppose 100% correct it, it's obviously with that you monitor traffic patterns um, and you need obviously a certain amount of events so if you start seeing, um, and luckily we have a lot of vehicles on the road, so we, we from that traffic data we can see, but listen, there's a congestion. Immediately we'll get notifications on the back end, and then the routing engine will take that into account. So, but listen, roadblock, uh, it stopped, whatever. We do not know what the incident is, but yes. the data, the information tells us there's a, there's a problem. So immediately you'll get a notification, you're the controller of the vehicle, and you can try and figure it out, jump on uh, Twitter or whatever, because they normally put it up there. So, oh, there's an incident. And actually tell the, okay, I'm happy, reroute vehicle, or if there's no alternative route, you know, let's, let's rather deliver at, at this point. And once you're done, hopefully the congestion is gone, and then you can go there. Although it might be a bit further, but obviously you save the time, and you obviously keep on utilizing your vehicle optimally. Okay, and 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 then I imagine that um, you know these these large companies with these big fleets, uh, you know, when you start talking about complexities, like multi destination routes, for example, you know that adds a whole new dimension to 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 the whole uh, scenario, doesn't it? It definitely does. Um, it adds up quite quickly. Um, if you have Ten vehicles and you do daily they will say to ten places. I mean, it's quite easy. You have 100 drops or pickups or whatever it can be. If you have 100 vehicles and you have 50 drops each, no human can do that quickly enough mm. um, and as fast as, as a, a piece of software that utilizes AI in the back end to do that for you. And that's where the time saving comes in. The big challenge we face, especially uh, with a lot of our fleets in South Africa is that we're so used to doing things manually and we have the manpower for that, that it's very difficult to change. Um, and it takes quite a while for the guys to understand what it's the benefits out of this. It's not your job that you're going to lose. Now mm. you can actually focus more on customer service and on the front end and actually manage your driver, not planning off your day away, not knowing what your driver is actually doing. You see resting under a tree, um, is actually delivering at the right place. I mean, how many times did, did I mean, I live in a state 
uh, people will put on a WhatsApp group, oh, I've got a package, it's not mine. Yes. <laughs> and, but it's the right region. So, so all of that um, obviously needs to be taken into account. And it, that multi-factor, multi-route, uh, the complexity goes sky high. And obviously you have certain service levels with your customers that you obviously want to fulfill continuously. And by showcasing this to them and actually give them real-time access, uh, they also have the visibility and they have the confidence in you as, as a supplier that you can actually mm. deliver stuff on time. Because you're open and you're transparent and, and you show them what happens. Accidents happen. Immediately you can dispatch a vehicle and the customer gets notified and knows, oh, my load's going to be load, uh, late for uh, two hours, whatever the case may be. Uh, we had an incident, uh, luckily, sir, nothing's been damaged. Here's some photos. Uh, so all of that, that ecosystem, uh, assists you to obviously better your customer performance, optimize your, your vehicles, and save time and money. Just adding more data and information is uh, is really, really helpful. Just out of interest, um, how, how much data does the average truck create in a day uh, that you're transferring and recording and that sort of thing? I was thinking about this now. It must be a few, a good few gigs of data. Yeah, well, it all depends on obviously what technologies you utilize. Yes. Um, a, a, normal, a normal tracking device um, will give anything from 8 to 20 megs on a day depending yes. on the frequency that you set it. By the moment you start adding uh, dash cams and uh, Ingrid or cameras, uh, it, it goes sky high. So track currently do about 170 million data points per day. Wow. So you can think it, it is, is, is massive. That's excluding video. The moment you start looking at video, video is a bit difficult because you do not um, capture it continuously. Yes. But if, if you start looking at all the events, uh, a vehicle normally have in between 50, well, let's call it 20 to 50 events a day that it will record. Initially, we normally see the first three months, it's it's quite high, it's in the 50s, and then it actually boils down to 20. And yeah. immediately, it tells us, listen, it's working. But what I want to get to is that each one of those clips, which is 30 seconds to a minute, is in the region of about two megs. Now, you can think if you have a 1,000 vehicles, um, well, exactly. Quite, quite easy. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a lot of data, and it's a it's a huge amount of data points as well. Now, let's talk about the data because data is such an important aspect. We know that there are you know legislative issues around data, and you know the compliance issues with regards to data. How, how does a company with with a large fleet use the data trackers collected? Because Data is a very sensitive issue. There's Papia, there's all sorts of things involved around it. Talk to me about managing the data and who collects the data and who does what with the data and do you share the data, for example? What happens with all the data? You know, so obviously we protect our, our customers' privacy and all data is, is if we use it, um, it's, we take the personalization away. We just use the training data to see where vehicles um, actually move, obviously, like your traffic data that you see on, on in the maps, for instance. Um, I've coined the phrase the last time as well, where I say a lot of companies are data-rich, information poor. So we actually specialize in taking our data, creating information, creating packages that we can assist our customers with to obviously assist them in their operations um, and in various ways. And all of this, once we see the use case, and for instance, then we build something like a TDIQ and try and make things faster, optimize it, or AA dash cam. Again, every time you add some technology, you add more data. So it just gets bigger and bigger. But the key is to actually have the ability, process all that data, get some information which is valuable, and sell it back to your customer. Like driving behavior, for instance, mm. scoring your, your drivers automatically. Uh, keeping your driver safe with, with all the ADAS events. Um, and it, it sounds easy. And if you read about technology, it sounds easy, but it, it becomes quite in-depth with that amount of data to actually be able to manipulate it and actually get um, knowledge out of it, information that you can utilize properly. Yeah, and you actually, at the end of the day, you, you, you're streamlining your business immensely by using all of this data <laughs> Um, and you're adding a lot more efficiencies to your business. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the big thing, uh, it, because we're living in this on-demand society, you want to have information now. So 
nobody's got the time anymore to go and do a replay of 24 hours worth of video or tracking data or whatever. He wants to be notified, there's the event, there's the video clip, this is what happened, make a decision, act on it, and, and go forward. And that's information, that's the key. That's what you want the value proposition you sell to your customer. Um, otherwise, you have to have lots of people, lots of manpower, and they're continuously monitoring things 24 by 7, which is not optimal, obviously, from time, cost saving, uh, cost point, uh, as, as well as human labor that, that you have to appoint. Absolutely fascinating. What an interesting business. Uh, Kobus Vasaki, who is the executive of Business Solutions at Tracker. Thank you for sharing those insights with us. Uh, it's incredible where technology is going and how it's uh, helping big businesses with these fleets, optimizing their routes, optimizing their performance, optimizing the revenue streams, all data-driven, all using AI and technology. Absolutely fascinating insights. Kobus, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Aki. Appreciate it. Thank you.